this is a guide to singapore gst and it is a part 2 of this series and in this presentation i am showing you some specialized scenarios related to gst so the part 1 was more for newly incorporated and common businesses newly incorporated companies and general businesses so it explained all the concept about gst and here i will show you some specialized scenarios which might be applicable to your specific case so the thing that we are going to see in this presentation are gst on import what happens when you have 7% and zero rated supplies applying for gst exemption exporting goods without gst registration bonded warehouse scheme and overseas vendor registration scheme so let's start and first point is gst on import now if you are importing any goods in singapore then when the import shipment is processed by singapore customs at that point of time gst will be charged on the shipment so whether you are registered for gst or not every import is subject to gst obviously there are some exemptions and some rules related to that but primarily speaking every import shipment will attract this uh, gst so let's take an example let's suppose that the value of goods that you are importing is 10000 singapore dollars on which you have paid freight of 2000 bringing the total to 12000 singapore dollars then custom duty will be charged on that bringing the total to about 16000 singapore dollars and then the GST at 7% will work out at 1120 Singapore dollars. So this GST is calculated at value plus freight plus customs plus insurance and any other direct expenses prior to landing of the goods. So one key thing to remember in most of the circumstances the logistic service provider that you appoint he will pay this GST on your behalf and then he will present you with the invoice so that you can claim back the input tax if you are GST registered entity. So you don't have to necessarily do all these activities but you will have to obviously deposit this money uh, with the logistic service provider. Now the next point is when you make standard rated and zero rated supplies both together. So first let's understand what is the standard rated. Standard rated supplies means those supplies which attract 7% GST and zero rated means those supplies which attract 0% GST. So two examples of zero rated supplies are export of goods and export of services. And the taxable supplies, definition of taxable supplies includes standard rated plus zero rated. So even if zero rated supplies are attracting 0% tax or 0% GST, they are still counted towards taxable supplies. Now let's presume that there is a company which is also exporting the goods and also selling the goods locally. So they have both these cases where the local sale is made at 7% GST and the export doesn't attract any GST and it is a zero rated supply. So if we look back at the compulsory registration rule, it says that your taxable turnover at the end of any calendar year is either more than 1 million or if during the coming 12 months period you are expected to cross 1 million dollars of taxable turnover then you are liable to register for gst this is the rule and now we have this company the example i have given which has more than 1 million dollar turnover which consists primarily of export but some part is and also some part which is local sales so the question is if a company is primarily of this type should they register for gst so legally speaking based on this definition they have to register for gst now i will explain you the problem here let's suppose the company is providing it services primarily overseas has a turnover of more than 1 million dollars and only minimum part of that is in singapore and since company is providing services they don't have much input side gst what i mean to say had this company been a product company they would have bought products and there would have been a substantial input side GST which they would have claimed back by registering for GST. So the preference of the company is not to register for GST but the rule forces them to register for the GST. 
However, in this case, IRS has given an opportunity to apply for GST exemption. So the rule for GST exemption is, if the proportion of your zero rated supplies over total taxable supplies exceed 90%, so more than 90% of your sale is zero rated supplies, and you would have been in a net refundable position had you been registered for GST, then in that case you can apply for GST exemption. So both these conditions have to be satisfied. And once you get the GST exemption, then you obviously cannot charge GST either to your local uh, sale and obviously not on export because export is anyway not subject to GST, but you cannot also claim the refund of input side tax. So in summary, this case specifically refers to your specific situations. If you are going to benefit out of it, if you want to avoid the uh, additional burden of maintaining records and everything, you can explore this. The next point is exporting goods without GST registration. Now let's suppose that you buy some goods in Singapore and you want to export it. So at the time of purchase, the supplier will charge GST to you. So you have an input side GST. But because you export, you are not going to charge GST to your customer. And therefore, the input side GST may become a cost for you. There is an option that you could voluntarily register for GST to claim back that refund. But let's say that the volume of transaction is very low. Maybe your company is new and you do not really want to voluntarily register and maintain all those GST records and add all that burden onto you. So there is one option here in this kind of circumstances. That is, you can buy the products in Singapore and export it and ask the supplier to charge zero rated tax. Supplier is legally allowed to do so provided that shipping address is out of Singapore. So if the supplier ship to address, he is directly shipping goods out of Singapore and if he is billing to your company, then in that circumstances, this mechanism is allowed. Moving on to the next slide, it is about free trade zone or bonded warehouse scheme. So sometimes what happens, you want to import goods into Singapore and want to keep it here for a specific period of time and want to do maybe some processing, repackaging, relabeling or something like that. And then you want to export the goods out of Singapore. So obviously when goods enter into Singapore, GST will be applicable. And then if majority of your transactions are export, there is no point in actually having all that GST administration burden. So in that circumstances, you can take benefit of free trade zone or bonded warehouse scheme. So in Singapore, there are various places where this, those are earmarked as free trade zone, where the warehouses uh, can be utilized to store your goods. And so long as goods are in that bonded area, there is no GST charge. Only if you decide to move those goods from that bonded warehouse to Singapore local, then the GST will be applicable. And you don't need to rent this entire warehouse. Most of the logistic service provider will provide you this service. So they will import goods, keep it in their bonded warehouse. Maybe they will even provide you services of repackaging or relabeling. And then may export also you on your behalf, obviously for a charge. So in this circumstances, the calculation will look like as follows. So value of import is 10,000. Import duty normally would have been charged if it is a product in those four categories and that is not going to be charged because there is no uh, because it is in bonded warehouse total with duty is 10,000 and again GST will not be charged. So the areas of Singapore where all these bonded warehouses are available are listed here. So it is Keppel District Park, Tanjong Pagar, Keppel Terminal, Jurong Port and so on. If you want to find out a service provider in this area, you can check on Singapore Logistics Association website and refer to the members directory. And the last point in this presentation is about overseas vendor registration. So what happens is with advent of technology, there are many services which can be provided on the internet and overseas, uh, overseas party can also provide these services without being present or having any presence in Singapore. That creates a non-level uh, playing field for international companies. So I'll give you one example. We take uh, 
TV services that is uh, we subscribe to various channels through either Singtel or through uh, Starup. And in both these cases, there is a 7% GST. So we have to pay maybe $100 per month if it is that is the cost plus $7 by way of GST. Now Netflix came into picture, then Spotify came. And then there are so many things which provide streaming services. And if these companies start offering same services in Singapore, then it will be it will be injustice to Singtel and Starup because they don't have to pay any uh, 7% GST and it becomes 7% cheaper for the end consumer. So to counter this problem, this overseas vendor registration scheme has been introduced. So under this scheme, overseas digital services providers, so digital means uh, streaming services, IT services, cloud-based services, software services, anything that can be classified as digital if a company is providing, with a yearly global turnover of more than Singapore dollar 1 million, and more than Singapore dollar 100,000 in Singapore in a 12 month period, they are required to register for GST and charge GST and obviously pay that GST collection to Singapore government. So here the company is actually registered abroad but providing services in Singapore and therefore they are required to comply with this requirement. So these are few of the special scenarios which I wanted to explain. I think these are clear to you. Keep it in mind, GST typically tends to be a bit complicated. So if your situation has complexity, then always refer to a good consultant. Just to highlight each of the scenarios that I explained here, there are IRS guidelines on that which range between 20 to 30 pages. Thank you for watching this video. This video was brought to you by Epica Consulting Singapore. Subscribe to our channel today to get notified when new videos are posted.